Hey everybody, um, this is uh, episode one. Um, we have some episodes prior to, but they were all in house and not on camera. Um, but these, uh, this is going to be stepping into a new broadcast for Gamers Ledge, specifically Eberron Borrowed Time. Um, under the Twelve Moons and the Ring of Cib of Sybaris, uh, the world of Eberron is healing after the end of a hundred year war on its largest continent, Corvair. Twelve countries signed the Treaty of Thronehold that ended the last war after a world-shattering catastrophe wiped a large central country, um, Kyrie, off the map. Uh, now a handful of years later, companions from different sides have come together to see what adventures this new world holds for them. Uh, ha they all had met years before during the war and found common ground in helping others seeking justice. Arid. A halfling rogue and a clawfoot rider from the Talenta Plains. <coughs> Tenno, a changeling bard who is looking for their next conquest and adventure. Vodka, a half orc wild maid trying to follow her diplomatic mother's footsteps. Groxar, a hobgoblin fighter mysteriously resurrected on the battlefield seeking answers. Duke, a goblin pirate chef looking <coughs> for ways to improve the lives of the people around him. Victor, a Warforged fighter who seeks the young lieutenant that he was made to protect. Yuji, a Foxer druid looking to expand his horizons after leaving his island cluster. And Dari, a tiefling cleric following a mysterious order from the Silver Flame. Uh, the hero's first meeting at the merchant town of um, Gatherhold uh, received an urgent call for assistance from the <coughs> wandering inn. A uh, halfling nomadic town deep in the plains, they also joined the Adventurer's Guild um, at the behest and patronage of one of the makers, um, one of the artificers um, from the uh, crafting house. Um, I forgot to add that one. Um, the scouts from uh, wandering in, the scouts and, uh, and some children had been captured and stolen around the fourth full moon of the, every fourth full moon of the last couple months. The party found the culprit, a half dragon were snake named Abaddon Isthar. Uh, it had left infected halflings in its wake. Uh, just after returning to wandering in, there was a cloudless thunder, and they found an elven infant um, quick, in a quickly growing <coughs> circle of fire. The child was dark haired. An elf out of Arenal, uh, they suspected, and it had a tiny mark that might one day be a dragon mark. The group decided to split up, which is always a good idea, right? Uh, Grothar, Vodka, and Duke decided to go south to Valinar um, to find someone to take the elven child. Uh, Valinar being <coughs> the country to the south of the Talenta Plains um, that is primarily elves. Uh, Tenno, Victor, and Arid decided to chase a rumor about reptile wranglers um, that may know where Arid's, that may have known where Arid's long lost mount might be. Um, the green team, uh, because they were primarily a goblin, a hobgoblin, and a half-orc, um, cut a path across the Razor <coughs> Crest Mountains down into the Bladed Desert. They found an oasis built into the ruins of an ancient crossroads. Um, they had been followed cultists, dressed in dark colors, wanted the child. The smaller party was able to find an elf of similar coloring, um, the barmaid at the Emperor's Clothes, um, which was a, an inn, um, to take the infant while they led the cultists away from the town and into a trap. These cultists were part of the Blood of Vol, um, and once dispatched, held clues to a nearby set of <coughs> ruins, the, the Wizard's Gambit. Um, it was once a huge lab and school teaching a lost mass magical art, chronomancy. Uh, they experienced strange time magic in a backwards and backwards combat uh, and watched the, as weird crystalline structures pushed power through magical circuitry that seemed to keep the ruins active. Cultists were experimenting, one of their own becoming polluted with a corrupting forces. One of the cultists, that is. Uh, they defeated the cultists and ended up back north through a portal. Meanwhile, the northern group tracked information through the bard's knowledge and secrets, finding out that a large set of crates was being shipped north and west around the Mornland. Uh, the crates were loaded; were going to be loaded in the back of a lightning rail train. Um, they were signed off by highwaymen aliases, and they got so they got job working security for the <coughs> lightning rail. 
Um, they stopped. It would be uh, robbery, but not before making it to the back side of the, of the train, which was damaged, and seeing a bunch of Warforged Clawfoots. Uh, essentially, um, magical robotic rep uh, raptors that escaped the train and disappeared into the plains. Um, there was one left, however, and that was Arid's own mount, Mero. Uh, although the creature has seemed to have a full leg replaced by a Warforged prosthetic. Um, this group finished and made camp in a strange window opened in space that they were that showed the groups to each other uh they took note of this and um had a short conversation uh, and then began the long trek to meet back up um the portal that the green team uh, had made dropped them on the north end of the um lake siri which is on the east side of the morning <coughs> Um, and the group um, had made their way to the town of S Semblance, uh, which is just east of the Mornland, um, about a day's ride away from the Lightning Rail. Um, and they settled into a comfortable and much needed break. Uh, I am now going to be handing it off to our players um, to describe the characters that they will be giving life this evening. So, Justin, who are you playing? Well, uh, better off to describe the environment, right? <clears throat> you see before you a scrawny goblin with a mashing of broken teeth and what you can describe as an unfathomable look in his eyes. He has a lopsided grin as he peers to the heavens, a look as if to say, will there ever be someone worthy to carry my ladle? A sad, profound look enters into his eyes as he turns to you. It shows sorrow of always having to be the best in the room. Not by choice, but by the nature. He is the best of us, and the weight of it wears on him. I am known by many names, but here are a few. <coughs> The King of the Sea, the Emperor Supreme, His Royal Majesty, King of the Kitchen, Mr. Flambe, Seven Layers Supreme, <coughs> Hey you! <laughs> and Stop! Thief! I have been called the most handsomest man in the world, the most humblest being alive. All want to be him. The one. The only. Duke. You've heard me, yes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Duke. Duke. Duck. 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 Duke. Duck. <laughs> Duck. When I printed that out, and <coughs> when I printed that out, I, um, I didn't expect a uh, performance. Nice. Nice. Um, so, John, <laughs> go ahead and follow that up. Who are you playing? I'm not calling you any of those names. <laughs> um, I'm playing a Hobblobin fighter, level three, who uh, was a soldier in the war and died on the battlefield and is now uh, is resurrected in search of the uh, spirit or whatever that brought him back. That's what, that's what drives him. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Jay, who are you playing? I am playing a tiefling cleric known as Daryl or Dari. Dari, okay. They are following the words of the silver flame in a mysterious message that was given to them. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And Naomi? Uh, I'm playing Vodka, who is a wild magic sorceress and social justice warrior for her home country and she legitimacy of her home country of Joram. Joram, yeah. Joram. Yeah. And um, her mother being a diplomat, and they want to make it a legitimate country in the eyes of Corvair. So 
that's for good. Because okay. Durham is one of the few countries that isn't recognized. that isn't recognized by the Treaty of Thronehold, and the treaty that stopped the war. And so, along with her social agenda, she is also trying to figure out how to control her wild magic sorcery, which tends to go awry. Um, thus, her soft spot for the little Jack Jack. The little elf baby. The little <coughs> elf baby that you guys found a home for. Yes. Yep. Oh, hi, Nimoy. Hey. Hey, buddy. Oh, good. Come here. Yeah, I got you. Alright. I'm not sure what that is. That sound. Yeah, I don't Well, know. it sounds like a robot <coughs> from uh, Incredibles is walking by. Yeah. Hey. Come on, that is weird. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm good. <laughs> Doug, Doug, welcome. Hey. Who are you playing? I'm going to be playing Victor, the Warforged fighter who was a soldier for the Syri army. When he was created by a influential family when their son decided to become an officer in the army and fight for his country, and they used their money and influence to create a war force specifically to protect him in battle. And on the last day of the war, on the day of mourning, they were on a mission in the center of the country. And when whatever happened, happened, they uh, were all separated. And since he was the only war forge in the unit, he was the sole survivor. But he has no memory of what happened that day. And the last thing he remembers is waking up across the border and running into all you guys. <coughs> okay, um, so that is all the characters. Did anybody have any questions for anyone else about their characters before we get started? Oh, Buffy. Such a wimp. Yes, come on. Come on, you guys. Which <coughs> one were you? Oh, I can't help you. Come on. It's great television, people. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Um, <laughs> The uh, the camera goes dark after our <coughs> opening, and as it opens, uh, we see Grokthar. Um, he is standing on a beach where all of the sand are small black pearls, um, small spheres covering the entire beach. <coughs> Sorry, now I got him. Um, looking out, uh, looking behind you, there are huge. Cliff faces behind you, um, dark stone, dark brown and black stone with white marbling running through it, um, reaching probably 50 or 60 feet above. You can see dry, stark white and pale grass sticking out from the top of the cliffs. Uh, maybe a few trees barely sticking out, but those trees are, are dead as well. Fully white bleach bone. Um, looking out across the ocean, it's a roiling mass of blue and green with that white foam, except the white foam is more like the yellow of bones. <coughs> um, and you can see what looks like maybe ancient buildings, broken buildings, sticking up from the water in this bay, like the bottom broken teeth <coughs> of some ancient dragon. It looks like some kind of civilization might have been here at some point before the ocean washed it, came in and washed some of it, most of it, away. Um, <clears throat> there's a whisper on the wind, and that whisper says, Release me. The sound falling into the wind as it's whipping past you. Across the bay, you see what might be ships, um, and you're not sure <coughs> what ships they might be, other than that they have crimson, dark, dark red sails. Um, the ships are too far away to see what color the actual wood of the ships are, but you can see those dark red um, sails as they are right along the horizon. Um, the wind seems to snap colder as you're seeing it, the waves crashing and crashing, and then everything <coughs> stops. It freezes. The, the, the water, the birds flying in the air, which you are seeing now, are not birds, but skeletons of birds 
flying through the air. And once again you hear Lilius me. The voice is gravelly and seems <coughs> to shake your chest as it says that. And then you shoot up awake. Your sweat clings your small clothes to your body. Um, the bed around you is partially wet as well with your sweat. Um, you're starting to come to and looking around and you realize you're, you're in your room <coughs> at the Crone's Hold. Which is the inn that you guys have been staying at for the past couple of weeks. Your your mind is starting to wash back that stress and that that not fear, but amp uh, apprehension that you were feeling as you, as common sights and and sounds and feeling are, are kind of once again calming things down around you. Uh, you hear the sound of laughter outside and. Um, maybe some dogs barking uh, as what sounds like their children are playing with some animals. Um, and you smell maybe a breakfast stew, um, but you're, you're still kind of taking deep breaths at that. Um, across the town of Semblance, <coughs> Vodka and Victor, Vodka and Victor, okay. are walking back from a small building um, run by a, a set of gnomes um, that have sending stones, small magical devices that allow people to send quick messages. Um, and usually what happens is somebody pays for their service to send a letter so that it travels much faster than trying to send, <coughs> as long as there's not a package with it, you can send a message great distances with these sending stones. It's more reliable too, right? No theft. Precisely. So, you, Vodka, had put in a request to see if headquarters in Sharn had received any letters from your mother through the Sending Stones. And they had. You actually received three letters, handwritten by uh, the small family of gnomes that run this small mailing station, um, from what seemed like your mom or um, people from Joam that, that miss you. Um, and so you kind of have a skip in your in your movement because you're you're pretty happy. Um, you, Victor, had never seen um, uh, a sending stone mailing center, and so you had went with her to kind of see what it was about. Because of all of the things that are coming out <coughs> from the war, um, communication, travel, things that were built for war, like yourself, that have become to be something else, is fascinating. Um, it proves that maybe not everything made for war needs to be all about war. Um, you didn't have any letters. Uh, but Vodka seems fairly happy. Um, and as you make your way across the street, heading back to the Kronos <coughs> Hold, uh, you also smell what might be breakfast. Um, but you have to dive out of the way a little bit as three small children chasing a dog um, run right across your path, like cutting you guys off. Um, skipping to, skipping to, um, Duke and Dari. Uh, Dari, you arrived about a week ago. Um, you know these people from before the war. Um, and so it was strange seeing them again. Your business coming into town had nothing to do with rest and relaxation or anything like that, but... Um, you were happy to see friendly faces after being on the road for so long. Uh, you and Duke are currently in the kitchen. Um, <coughs> hold one second. Uh, I need to find that page. One second. Never. You are. You are in the um, Crone's Hold uh, kitchen <coughs> making Parliament pie. Um, you had you guys as a group had kind of done some favors for the owners of the Crone's Hold, so they pretty much put you guys up, um, giving you free room and board. And you guys have also kind of traded off with some of the um, small chores and stuff like that, helping out uh, as you've been kind of taking a break <coughs> um, from the stress of going through 
a strange dungeon. Um, the owners, uh, Teak Mellows and Pat Mellows. Pat being the um, the uh, kind of a comfortable aged woman, a human woman, uh, is the one that handles almost everything about the inn. So what's it teach? Teak. T e e k. Um, she handles almost everything uh, with the inn. Uh, Teak. You would guess he is an adventurer of sorts, or was a while ago. Uh, he is a Fairly large orc, um, very comfortable in his years. His right arm ends just above the elbow, and he has a cap, an iron cap, over his um, what's left of his arm. And there is a ghostly blue hand with three fingers and a thumb in the approximate place of where his hand would normally be. Um, when you first came here, Vanka, mm -hmm. you were able to piece together that somebody had enchanted that cap with mage hand, oh, and it gave him uh, a semblance of having an additional hand. Um, but he is more than happy to, <coughs> to drink with the people that come through and tell his stories and listen to their stories. He's a very uh, genial man, but you know he doesn't really do much around the inn itself. Uh, he's more about the town and making sure people are comfortable. Pick things up or anything? Yeah, it, it <clears throat> seems to move and act exactly like a hand. You've noted that he probably doesn't have much feeling or he's not able to feel heat because he'll reach into the fireplace and stoke the fire with that blue ghostly hand. Um, the spell, you guys have seen a couple times, the, the actual spell, and it allows you to manipulate things at great distances. It seems that this one is tied to what would normally be a, a normal length of hand. Um, but it's <coughs> still pretty neat. Um, but yeah, it, he, he'll help with the bartending and slap people <coughs> on the back and accept change and stuff for, for, for um, spirits and food. Um, but yeah, he's a big, boastful orc um, that really enjoys life. Um, so, uh, what are you guys doing? Right now. I was going to say, um, I'm trying to concentrate on what the words were during my dream. Can I... <clears throat> you're, you're, it's hard to bring back. Roll me an intelligence check. I am trying to forget my dream by eating <laughs> breakfast. Mm -hmm. Don't don't so, thinking? the breakfast stew is already done. The parliament pie is for a celebration coming up. What is it? Uh-oh. It's a natural <laughs> one. Oh, you're still making it up. <coughs> so, uh, at, at least it's not an important fact or anything <laughs> that you might want to remember. Um, as, you, <laughs> as you're really trying to focus on it, you hear the clanging of pots and pans, yeah. and your stomach starts to growl. Um, you realize that that breakfast stew is is hitting you a lot harder. That hunger is hitting you a lot harder than you expected. All right, I had those hours to get some food. <laughs> That's probably that, and the children screaming, and then vodka yelling at them right outside your window too. That didn't. Yeah, Damn, that, happy that might have. You're, you're really concentrating, and then that just shook you away. Ah, um, why would you do that? <laughs> Uh, as you two um, walk in, you can see that the inn itself, um, I mean, it, it could probably house 30 or 40 people comfortably yeah. without being right next to each other. Um, this morning, though, there's probably only six or seven people uh, just sitting around, and most of them are already eating a thick and hearty stew made mostly of the leftovers from the night before mixed with some egg and maybe a little bit of uh, ale to help water it down. Not that you need yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's a, it's essentially the same breakfast stew that they make every morning. So every morning it's a little bit different because it uses um, last night's last leftovers. Night's leftovers. 
Um, but it's always good, and it always comes with a friendly smile. Um, and so as you guys make your way in, you can see that uh, Pat is already getting bowls ready, and she's, even though you're a Warforge, the way that she has approached that situation is she treats you like she would treat any other guest. So even though it's not necessary, she makes sure to serve you with a bowl the same as she would everybody else. I'll eat. Hey. Huh? What? Do you eat food? No. I'll take it. So, yeah. And so, um, <laughs> bowls are placed out for you. Uh, good, you good. and, yeah, um, you and Dari, uh, Duke and Dari, uh, finish the, the Parliament pie. It's essentially a large mincemeat pie. Uh, you're making a couple of them with neat little designs on the top. And um, uh, Pat was going through some of the motions and helping you with this <coughs> recipe. Because I know that Duke is collecting a lot of recipes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're told that this is um, the uh, one of the base recipes for... Um, the Bright Blade Celebration, um, which is a fairly large uh, holy day of Dal Dorn, the Sovereign of Strength and Steel. Uh, it celebrates the, a god of combat, festivities take the form of prize fights and athletic competitions, <coughs> um, especially those with the skills of weaponry. Uh, this is Karnath, after all. And this um, is prior to the war, this was still a celebration, or is this post-war? Um, celebration. This is this celebration has been on the books for a is long it time. Combat with arms and not magical combat. Yeah. Okay. So would this be um, so no almost like I would imagine like the no, Scottish no, like get together they throw the logs that kind of thing like this is just a everybody gets a better in a in a a show of skill mm. or is this like <clears throat> nights the round table like where people don't don't live after this celebration but it's oh, all no, for the celebration it's like so a mosh pit. they don't um hmm? oh, oh it should be like that Okay, uh, so, there, Karnath. Um, the, the country of Karnath, which you guys are in, um, it, it is a, like I said before, it's a very militaristic country. So this isn't a surprise that it would have a holiday such as this, um, celebrating one of the gods of combat and kind of physical prowess. Um, but the, the, um, the pie specifically is made with a lot of um, organ meat um, that is known, as Pat tells you, known to help increase stamina and and uh, and strength and endurance for these upcoming uh, events. And the uh, celebration is in two days' time. I have now 15 pages open. Okay. Um, uh, stage fights. She tells you you can bet on some of the bigger fights, but a lot of them are staged. And you've seen stuff like that before, where it's more of an entertainment. No, it's totally especially, right. especially in the last four years, a lot of entertainment <coughs> groups and troops um, that have moved around, like service troops that that present um, an act. A lot of them are depictions of battles of the war. Um, and especially you two know that they don't come close. Um, the battles are very... Because you guys are fighters and because you both fought in the war, um, you can tell when something's staged. Uh, the rest of you, maybe it's not as obvious. I would know. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> I, not to be, um, nah, I'm okay being a jerk about this. You're almost royalty. I know, but I grew up around those halfling little wild creatures. Oh, you did. You grew up in the Talented Plains. I did. You did. So you would think that wrestling is real. Yeah. 
Yeah. It is. It's totally real. Which is what I'm saying. <laughs> you have a hard time telling the difference. She was, she was from the rougher <laughs> side of the upper side. So, well, they just, so... They, they, you know, like, I don't know what to do with this crazy girl. Let's toss her to the halfway. While vodka... They give her only two fancy dinner forks. While vodka, yeah. is, while vodka is the daughter of a very well-known diplomat for Joram. Yep. Very well-known diplomat for Joram. Uh, she herself was kind of shipped to another wild sorcerer in the Talenta Plains who happened to be a halfling. So she actually grew up with both, but more of late, the halflings who helped teach her how not to set people on fire by accident. I mostly. was setting up mostly. mostly. They, they taught me more how to set it on fire on purpose. and Or make it look like it was on purpose. <laughs> So, uh, as you guys find seats around yeah. one of the medium-sized tables in this bar, um, you, Pat has just finished um, wiping in some good citrus oil, uh, so that, that wood and that fragrance are working really well with the breakfast stew. Um, she asks what you have planned for today. What are you doing, sweeties? What's the plan for today? Breakfast first. Oh, I, I can't blame you there. This is some of the best. And then we're she watching smells it. wrestling. She smells <clears throat> it. And roll me a perception check. Oh, okay. Oh, goodness. Well, I, well, I, 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 I don't think I want to know right what this is. If you don't want, this is one of those rolls oh, that if no. you don't want to roll, you don't oh, have to. Okay. I don't want to know oh, what this is. Oh, wait. What, what do we roll? Perception. You roll a d20 and then you add your perception. Oh, you're going to tell us what we're eating. Oh, okay. Ten. Oh no! Eighteen. <coughs> Eighteen. Yeah. Four. Okay. I forgot I had an egg. You're, you've already started eating. Oh no! I <laughs> ate this a while ago. Yeah. I don't care who's in it. I'm you've good. you've moved on. Too. You've moved on to well, to his bowl. His yeah. Bowl. Yeah. I'm good. It tastes good. I don't care who's in it. <coughs> what, I don't you got, know if this get? is a six or a nine. What's that? What'd you get? Or you not rolling? I rolled almost eight. Okay. Let me see. It doesn't matter. You don't notice. You're also eating as you are. I mean, oh. you, I mean you, you help make you it, um, but as she goes to smell it, you see her right eye twitch, and she stops inhaling immediately, and then puts it down with a smile on her face, and goes, mmm. It is good stuff, I'm almost done. And slowly walks away. <laughs> it's good. <clears throat> Reminds me of stuff I used to eat with the... If you catch it... Friend. I guess is there a counter... Uh, it reminds perception. me at home. Because it would be a roll against well, my... my uh, um, so there is an insight check. Insight well, I'm doing check. something and it's if anybody else notices it. Well, so uh, it depends I what don't. you're doing because most of them already said they're eating so they probably wouldn't know that. <coughs> so I guess it would be a deception and then if anybody wanted to roll yeah. against my deception, so... I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, just, just going to see dumb luck Vi and see what Victor happens. isn't really eating Five. either. He's just watching <gasps> people. No! If, you, if you have a higher perception than I rolled a natural 20. To perceive what you, what's going on? Yes! Just for the hell of it! 11. Okay. <coughs> okay. So all you, all so you see happened? is is Duke muttering <coughs> his breath. No one, no one hates my food. I love what, your what's, food! What's, who spiked my food? <laughs> and it's just to himself. It's just like talking to himself like... Because he's the only one that noticed that she had a... Uh, didn't like it. It's just like... What? No, because so, no. he's, like, he's upset. So, he's going like, to uh, let him know this is delicious. In the future, you don't even need to roll for that. They can roll perception yeah. to see if they hear it. <clears throat> but unless you're trying to be deceptive... Okay. Yeah, but uh, you guys hear that. Um, Dar this is Dari, excellent. Uh, you guys are... are Face deep in food. Um, it's not oh bad. It's, it's, it's not a bad breakfast, too. It does it does taste like maybe it's a little bit more mutton than you might have wanted to put into a morning stew. Um, oh, no. It starts with an M. It belongs in morning stew. Noted. Mealworm. Yeah. Like, that's how you... Noted. Oh, goodness gracious. Mongoose, <laughs> Marsupials. <clears throat> so, uh, she Wires. hasn't... <coughs> what, what is the plan for today? 
What are you guys wanting to do today? Okay, but the festival uh, and the fighting when, is today, right? No, two days time it starts. You've noticed that more people than have been, you guys have been here for a couple of weeks. So more people have come within the last couple of days than you've ever seen in this town at all. This town actually has a fairly, <clears throat> used to have a fairly large manufacturing. Um, they actually have uh, warehouses, not what you would call a warehouse, it's really not a warehouse, but <clears throat> no, it's like it's like a, a larger, um, what are those Viking lo longhouse? Is it longhouse? Long yeah. They have longhouses set up um, that have kind of uh, forges and smelting in them that just haven't been used. It's because this up. used to be a town that made weapons to ship in deeper into Karnath, so um, but that hasn't been... <clears throat> what? Assembly lines, but not exactly mechanical. Yeah, kind of. Just, uh, sure, yeah. But um, it's since, like a mill town that's no longer since the Mornlands um, happened, um, they a lot of production's been moved further away, uh, and so a lot of people moved. So you've seen a lot of people kind of coming back into town, and they've actually converted a couple of those longhouses into almost like guest housing for the different troops and um, troops. R O U P E S and T R O O P S. Two different kinds of troops. One's, one being entertainers and actors, another being actual military people <coughs> from deeper into Karnath that have come out to celebrate in this small town. Yes. Is there a main race in this town? Like, is it, it's not Halfling Town. Is it more humans than anything? Like,. Just I need to know what I'm training to fight against. Okay, so, look, I'm a uh, magical fighter, but we need a uh, this, strong. This town specifically, it's a, it's a, it has become a, um, almost like a, a dying American town, where the the reason the town was there to begin with has kind of died off. So now it's just people who are living here to live here, or people that have ended up. Here. <coughs> like, if you're trying to find out who you're trying to fight um, from the oppression. So, of the people that are here now are primarily human, but about a quarter of them are dwarven, which isn't a surprise because just to the east of Karnak are the Murar Holds, which have a lot of primarily dwarves. So there are a handful of dwarves in town. Um, you haven't really seen any of the elves or kind of other, uh, other races of that nature, um, being like the elves or the... Uh, Colossi or any of those. So it's green people more or oppression. No, here. no green people oppression here. They're <coughs> gone. They're not here. Exactly. We're not. We're being oppressed. No, um. No. Actually, the I mean, elves were the you ones have, that were giving us shit. Uh, Teak. Teak is a large orc, and you you do know that he has made friends with several other orcs mm -hmm. that are in town. So the elves, the ones that were giving us crap before when we had little elf baby, because they're like, what are all these green people with elf babies? And those are, those were actually no, aren't elves from Valinar, <clears throat> and Valinar is actually kind of xenophobic. Um, they, of? they took that country in the war and said, this is ours now. And so they feel like they have to defend it from all incomers. It's only been four years since the end of the war. Um, so they are pretty xenophobic. Um, these people welcome you with open arms. You've yeah, helped them in town. Uh, it seems that everybody in town actually likes you guys. Um, have we seen any uh, cultists? You have not. That's why I've like not it seen here. any cultists. So if we wanted to this, has been, so. this has been the first place <coughs> you guys have stayed anyway. for longer than a couple days where well, cultists did not show up. So, because my food was tainted, at least I feel, oh, I'm, sorry I'm going to go quietly to the kitchen and relook over the stock of all the items I used to make the meal and see if anything is tampered with. And then, if I find anything that's close to being tampered with, I'm going to look at if there are any shitty characters in the um, dining area, specifically trying to find anybody who's looking for anybody having an impact from something. So, as you make your way to the kitchen... What? Oh, it just hurt tampered with meal. Just no, he thinks that you also. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Thank you. Uh, you didn't. You didn't hear that. <coughs> you and you didn't see that. it. Yeah, it's a doubt. It was out of character. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, Duke. Duke stands up with his bowl yeah, and and walks back into the kitchens. Give me a perception check, or a. Did we talk about proficiency cooking, as a, as a profession? I don't think we did. Um, so just give me a perception check this time. Yeah. 
Uh, how about the rest of you? Did you have any more questions for the celebration? Or? Oh, I was saying, there's been a lot, uh, an increased number of people coming into town, um, both Karnati military soldiers and circus troops and stuff for entertainment. And you've seen some kind of mock battles starting and, and some people setting up sets. Um, like sets of, of different battles that happened across Corvair, um, meant to show mostly, like that mostly to show Carnathy <coughs> uh, wins. I would like a rocket Victor montage. Wins. What's the word for that? Victory. Victories. Thank you. Carnathy victories in the Hundred Year War. Did you not find the book? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, 11 plus 4 next to the So yeah. Okay. Um, you, as you're making your way through the kitchen, kind of looking at it, smelling it, you see that Pat is over in one corner and she's snipping some of the uh, leftover pieces from what was put into the stew. And she goes, and then puts it back down. You can see she put down a mutton bone. Um, and as you kind of move over to investigate, you can see that that specific mutton bone looks like it may have been spoiled. Not tampered with. It may have been old, <coughs> like somebody. It's like alcohol. Somebody, it's not you, yeah. had cut up meat that they probably shouldn't have been thrown in the morning For your stew. Weak little yeah. inside you could smell it in the stew, and it seemed like everybody who was eating the stew was just fine. But it may be that she is so familiar with making this every morning that it's wrong. Okay. Um, I do want to look out into the um, uh, dining area and see if I know anybody that's being shady, particularly having been experienced with uh, rogue, um, anyone that's doing roguish things. So kind of just sitting there eating and drinking by themselves, but you can tell they're kind of just listening to the people around them, trying to pick up um, snippets that... Okay, uh, suspicious. give me another perception check for not being trusting at all at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you um, said there's a bunch of new people in town, <coughs> and so, I've just been tracked so down by people. I apologize. You are right. You are right. I did say there's a bunch of new people in town. I also said there's only like six or seven people in here until you guys came in, and they all were regulars you guys have seen before. Okay. But what is your role? 17 total. Okay. Uh, it seems that about half of the people here some of them maybe even in your party, are nursing a hangover. Oh, yeah. And s slowly oh, eating the stew. <laughs> but um, other than that, it seems like everybody in here is just oh, eating breakfast before going out and doing something. I want to uh, talk to the orc. Yeah, okay. Uh, he's, like, you like, see, he's chuckling to himself and humming uh, a, uh, a some kind of, of rough yeah. hunting song. Um, in or, in, in like Orkish, um, but it's obviously a dirty song Practice. because of how he's chuckling to himself halfway through some of the words. Uh, and he's behind the bar um, putting out extra uh, clay mugs and getting them <coughs> clean because he's anticipating another busy night. Yeah. With all these extra people coming in town, I this is only this is one of two off. inns in town, and this is the only inn that has an attached tavern. So, uh... They know us, right? Because we've been here for a while. Mm -hmm. His name is Teak. Teak. So, like, Teak. Her name uh, is Teak, right? Have you seen any. Teak and Pat. Okay. <coughs> have you seen any strange characters <laughs> looking for some. <laughs> <laughs> Besides us. <laughs> Stranger than you. That's funny. Well, I mean, uh, we've got these new people coming into town, all shapes and sizes. Um, I guess I have to ask what you meant. Something. Uh, Do I can I answer <coughs> I don't know, something that religious or cultish, wearing robes or something like that? Uh, I mean, we got a group of them, uh... Preachers? Silver flame <coughs> runners oh, yeah. uh, that are making their pilgrimage. Um, they passed by here a couple of days ago. But, uh, robes, not so much, yeah. And cultists, uh, I don't think that they'd be walking around nice. these parts. Not in Karnath. <coughs> yeah, I don't really imagine that culture about, about waving themselves up. <laughs> about about where, if you were to wonder where they could be near here, where would you look? 
Well, I mean, if we're playing a game, because that's kind of what it sounds like, uh, if I was a cultist, I'd probably stay in the, the ruins of that temple that's up north in the forest. Um, but I, uh, I wouldn't want to go there. <coughs> so remember that you guys are, and you know, the stream's not going to be able to see any of this, but you're right here. So it doesn't show any forest on this map. But you guys have been here long enough that you know there's a grouping. There's probably a good square mile um, of trees in like an oasis in the plains. You say we're like right here? Yeah. Or, yeah, we're on the edge we, of the warmland. Where did we come out uh, on the beach? Like, down here? Yeah. We were down. Okay, we went up here. Yep. And so you're just, saying up <coughs> there's a, up on the herd, a forest. No, just there's a, there's not a forest no, on the map. It's not uh, on the map. We're, okay. we're because it's so the for the forest he calls it is yeah. so yeah. small. It's, like it's not even on the oh, on the map. Okay. It's, it's still like, tall trees. Well, I was thinking like you know. Uh, in the hills around here, where you have like the denser parts with the oaks and stuff like yeah. that, it could be called a forest for people that are be, used to plains. For people, for people that are used to plains, it's a forest. But you guys have been to forests, and it's not a forest. It's not a forest. Um, but you've seen it because most of what's around the town is plains. Um, so you've seen the trees in the distance. It's all relative. Yeah. But there's no path that is led up there. Apparently, according to him, right now, there's some kind of temple ruins up there, but. Um, he said, mm, uh, "That's that's more than what I would do. Uh, we've got the we have the temple here in in town, but they'd scare off mm, anybody that's talking cults. Are you looking for something specific?" So during this whole time, uh, you just Duke's just like behind the counter, it, looking at people <coughs> suspiciously. You guys are having a conversation. Walks past yeah. you, Teak, smells the glasses, puts yeah. it back, just keeps going. Teak, Teak does not have an inside voice. Yeah. So there is no such thing. Over the last couple of weeks, you've known there is no such thing as Teak trying to hide what he's saying. I'm sorry. Duke always thinks there's someone out to get him. I mean, being the most humblest man alive, people are gonna try to take that title. Nice, nice. Um, sorry, I need. Is it is it something is it something you're worried about? Should we be expecting? Um, no, this is something we've uh, run across in, in the past. Wasn't sure if they were still following us or. Spoiled. We Maybe we should go talk to people at the temple. So he says the temple, and he asks you ask that question. So as soon as he finishes that, Duke's still behind the the bar counter, just looking crazy eyes at um, so some of the builders. Interrupts into his thing. As as, as Teak has been answering your question, he's still been working. Um, and he'll, every once in a while, when you say something like, "Have you seen anybody in robes or whatever?" He'll like look over his shoulder with a confused look. And he thinks you're joking, so he'll <coughs> laugh it off and then answer your question when he realizes you're not joking. But after you came back and were back there for longer than a couple of seconds, yeah. he started handing you clay mugs yeah. so that you could put them up on the counter behind him. Yep. Um, While I'm also looking yeah. crazy eyes at the people, and I'm basically you finish that, it's like, yeah, maybe we should go to the temple. That's probably where we can... <clears throat> Does anybody else have any ideas? Return the stolen goods with which the cults have taken. We're going to a shrub temple? No, I meant the temple in town first and to talk to them about the temple in the... Oh, okay. Oh, dear. Hmm. Um, the town ones probably don't have stolen goods. We can go to the ones in the woods. Oh, we know. <laughs> I mean, it could be empty. We don't know. Maybe, don't maybe you have guys but there could be clues. <laughs> clues with which we can find <laughs> the... Tra the I mean, the rewards, I mean... So, you have been to the temple the here. I think you're getting it is a fairly getting large high. temple. We just need to get out and explore, huh? They're all out to get us. The they cults really have been after us. I was asking because I didn't understand what she said. Oh. What, that you guys have temples? No, wait, you said something before, and I did not understand you. I did not hear you. But what were you asking about? I said shrub temples. <coughs> I, I said something like, we're going to an abandoned temple. No, I guess there's a temple in town, from what I'm guessing, from what I sort of have over here. Well, it's over the river and through the woods. I mean, through, and there's one in town, and then the there's answer. one in the forest, yeah. which the forest is really kind of shrubbery. 
Because they're not used to force. I'm not a stretching. Okay. okay. It's protected by the natural saying me. Oh, so, gosh. you have been to the temple in town. The temple in town here um, is a um, insult, is a uh, large, like, octagonal building that has multiple sides. And it's a temple to the sovereign host, which is, instead of having a pantheon of specific gods, um, the sovereign host is like a grouping of, of gods, relative gods, that people worship, like, kind of as a whole. He might be a fighter who worships the, the god of the forge, or the god of war, or the god of battle. It's like, the, but like, it's still, uh, like a non-denominational. Game of Thrones, where you've got like the seven gods, where they, they all pray to multiple ones. They kind, kind, kind of, like yeah. Multiple. And so this, the Sovereign Host is the largest kind of religion <laughs> that you might find sure. outside of like Silver Flame. However, there's not really any animosity between the two. Um, they don't like burn you at the stake at the stake for being a silver uh, a devout follower of the silver flame, um, <coughs> but they don't have a temple for the silver flame here. Um, you also, because you've been here for a week, you met with the pilgrimage of monks and priests out of um, Thrain, where you're from, um, that traveled through here. Uh, they were all in um, like heavy robes of white and brown and linen and burlap um, and kind of spreading the word as they make their trek from Drain up through to the far um, the far corner the port far far, far port um, and then make their way back to Drain. they've done it every year for 50 or 60 years even during the war um, they didn't make it back as often but it was a pilgrimage that they, that they started. <clears throat> so yeah, um, Duke at least says to Brockthar, "We should go to the, uh, we should go to the the temple in the woods. Yes, that's probably where they're hiding. They would poison the food, all ahead. from the temple. The food like wasn't the... poisoned. It was perfectly fine. I don't know why you were just. <laughs> What's he on about now?" Well, I mean, I don't think you guys, you guys are all eating your food and that. Yeah, this is just me mumbling myself. I think we should... We're used to you mumbling <coughs> to yourself at this point. You're just mumbling faster and louder than normal. And we're like, okay, well, we need to take him for a, out for a walk. Get some more um, information. Yeah, he needs crazy. to get out and get some air or he's going to start stabbing people preemptively. Get some more information. Or he'll start poisoning the food preemptively. So you're going to go to this temple... Do you yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Um, can't poison my food if I poison it first. At least get some information cool. before you get out. And I can't be anyone's if food we, taster. So. Yeah. If we see <coughs> him not eating his own food, food we was need fine. To be I don't careful. know what you're talking about. Yeah. Food is great. Uh, I know. And I, I saw. Him. I just feeling my bones. Okay. Uh, all right. So, um, is anybody going with Grapsha? Yeah. Yeah. We'll I better go with him. You coming with us, Tiny? Do we know a uh, Duke as like uh, a conspiracy the theorist or something? Or or he's always coming with these strange. Um, so I'm really sorry, but like sometimes, I lost my yeah. So actually, that's a question for you. So hmm? How often do they experience paranoid Duke? <laughs> paranoia? Yeah. Conspiracy stuff from you. You're yeah. So first of all, is this rare? It's not paranoia <laughs> if you're right. Well, okay, we're still waiting for that. If we preemptively, <coughs> I thought you were like twenty one or twenty two. Okay, so we're about the same age. Yeah. How how old are you, Daddy? Twenty. Yeah. So we're about the same. Age. Um, it's not it's not paranoia if you're right. So I guess often would be that answer. Okay. Yeah. So we kind of you don't live this time. long. We ignore a lot without of that. being observant. And that's probably so true for a goblin, because you, you've, you've made the, the right age of six. And so we follow where his intuition Goblins don't age the same way. Yeah, I thought I had an age on okay, here. Okay, he'll mind. walk it out. He will work it out after a while, and then we can yeah. come back, and we can drink, and we can watch All right. the fight. So, uh... Or be part of the fighting. Is anyone not <laughs> going with Grouser? I'm not an actor. I'm not. I'm just letting him... Is anyone not going with grass time? Okay, uh, as you guys yeah. get ready to go, um, what are you taking with you? Because uh, okay, most, so of, most of the time you've spent here in town, 
you haven't been walking around in your armor, you haven't been walking around with heavy weapons, um, you might have been walking around with some small weapons, That's but bad. when you when you walk <coughs> around with big weapons, you get strange looks because how far yeah. away is the temple? Um, maybe it's about fifteen minutes. Um, fifteen, 15 minutes. minutes, one five. How often does our buddy here get his paranoid need we to just get out and that. explore? It's often. Yeah. It's often. So every now and then we just need to go for a walk. We so just, my character yeah. is going to be off guard and really maybe have her walking stick, which will be her yeah. earth stuff. And I'm going to bring my full combat kit. My five rounds of magic ammunition. Stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm so you got. So you have two. So you have two. You have two long. You have a long sword on your back and a short sword at your hip. Mm -hmm. Okay. He helps like kids so like, with that. You're stuff, already. Like, you're yeah. already Everybody getting strange here, looks. Yeah. The warforge is already getting strange looks in a small town, so why not, right? Yeah. See, so he you takes it seriously. Up. Everybody else is on a duke walk, and they just go tell Pat. All right, we're gonna we're go on our duke, duke walk. walk, and it's like, and everyone knows what we're talking about. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> we're no, take they're real. For a walk. They're real. I know. You don't understand. Not, I know you want to walk. I go ahead, get your buddy. I told you. <laughs> See, walk. it was him the whole time, and last week it was a raccoon that was taking everybody's food from the back. I told Noodles. you the garbage was missing. I told you. So no one believed me. Uh, those of you that that normally wear armor, are you armored up? Yes. 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 Okay. I don't usually Are you wear carrying armor your, any of your weapons? I am taking my well, mace and my crossbow. So that's a yes. Armor. Yes. So then you're you're wearing armor and. I mean, if everybody else has armor. Okay. I won't be so the only you, guy. <laughs> you you got done. You went upstairs to wash your face. I came back this. down and everyone was in armor. <laughs> and you Not went. Me? Son of a. Yeah, I'm like, no, it's just another duke walk. I have no clue what's wrong with these people. They just ate something weird this morning. Okay. We're just. Uh, duke so duke everyone's walk. everyone's going armored. Yeah. Not me. Okay. You, do you have armor? I have mage armor, so... So good. then, do you... Well, you keep saying, not me, but you are as armored as you normally are. Yeah, I look like I normally am, but I have a walking stick or something like that. I don't care. Um, I've got my short sword, which doesn't look weird. Yeah. And my pocket daggers that don't aren't showing. Okay. Um, really? So you guys you guys make your way out. Um, Pat says, be careful out there. And as you make your way out, um, pushing through um, the, the older wooden door, it kind of creaks a little bit. Yet Duke yells back, don't eat the poisoned food, as he walks out. Wait, don't listen to Duke! He doesn't... He's, he's, oh, we need uh, to take the robot. You, you walk out, and you hear um, kind of music on the wind. Um, the whole place empties out. And it just, it just, everybody goes no, quiet. I think I'm everybody looks at him and just like, and goes back to eating yeah. the food. Yeah. <laughs> we're taking Duke for a walk, and they know exactly what we're talking about, because Duke needs a walk. Aww. Yeah, there's like a record scratch on there. It's like, don't eat the poison you, food. You you hear you hear music as you walk outside. Um, people are setting up tents, and um, while you've seen um, uh, more people arriving in town, uh, you actually see. Um, I would have been so frustrated if I was muted this entire time. <laughs> um, <laughs> that happened earlier on my test. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you, you get outside and um, there, there's a couple of different bands playing, you see bards have shown up, there's a lot of actors and entertainers that are practice boxing, um, somebody has set up two very large ships, like boats, um, they're obviously made of, of like uh, stage planks, you know, they're stage ships, um, but they actually have, are setting up almost like a stage production of a sea battle. Um, just as you're kind of leaving and walking across some of the <coughs> open spaces. Duke, Duke, if I miss this show, I will blame you. Uh, so Duke <laughs> looks around for a mop. What's you, a mop gonna do? Give me a perception check. Oh no. Um, oh, you, uh, oh, I, you see some Karnathi... I have eight. plenty of tricks. You do not see a mop, but you are outside. Yeah, I'm trying to find, like, a broom of something, like, something that's got a bristle... Top. As you're walking by, um, you realize sick. that the um, the store, mm -hmm. which has been getting pretty good um, <clears throat> sales since people have been coming into town, probably has something like that. I run into the store real quick. Okay. Um, I'd like to buy. It's that a mop. it's a very kind of old man. He's hunched over as one good eye, a small bit of hair, light hair on his head. Am I yeah. recognizing patterns yeah. of behavior? You want to get the Duke leash out. You want what? No, the mop. I, I want the mop. Uh, 
I'm gonna follow him. I wanna buy the mop. Thank you. Uh, you have a mop. I can buy it. That would be two silver. All right. I what? take two silver. He waxed okay. at me. I get to do hellish rebuke. Dude, why are we buying a mop? I'm buying a disguise. Oh. Oh my so, God. as I buy the mop from him, I, buy this guy's why? I break the head why? of the mop off. No! I already paid him. That was my favorite mop! <laughs> <laughs> it's for the I, I betterment of society. <laughs> what? Is he alright? So, as, right. as you hand him a couple extra silver, he, he turns and goes, My wife made me that mop. <laughs> <laughs> So he puts the mop on his head. Okay. I know it's. it's takes crazy. out part of his fifty foot of uh, silk rope. Yeah. Um, the rest of it's still in his bag, so he takes the extra and makes like a bonnet. Okay. Walking outside, Duke looks for somebody that's in a bulky robe. Somebody that's probably traveling in, in like a bulky overcoming robe. Okay. Um, so what Duke level walks level up to that person. To All right. I'm kind of just wondering what's happening. Uh, I hello? can literally pick him up by the head. I just need to see how this is going to play out. Can, have can, you been to the temple? Wink. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. I, I just let him do it. I'm I, sure. uh, just let him get it out of the system. Roll with it, people. Uh, no, I, ma'am. I haven't been to the temple. Good boy. Should I go to the temple? So I want to see if he's lying. Okay, <laughs> so that's an insight check. Yep. Uh, he doesn't appear. He perceives like he's telling the truth. He hasn't I, been I believe he's telling the truth. Yeah. Also, he needs to get Wait, out of his I maybe I misunderstood. Do you mean life. today? Soul, he needs to be able to it's it's only like okay, yeah. thirty yeah. minutes. There's no acting. Not today yet. Yeah. To We're looking for the gathering point. Let him do it. Just play with it. Say. <laughs> The gathering point? Gonna... Yes, yes, I guess there's too many people here. Come, come, and I pull him to the corner. Need to remember to keep some oh. legs in our bags. Why are you here? Uh, okay. uh, he's not moving. You know um, he says, what, what are you... Oh my gosh, I love Why are you here? I'm here for the celebration. <laughs> Have you been... Good boy. I look him, I... I, I He's a find like he, a soapbox nearby. Stand yeah, so up and look you were saying, eyes. were you saying, were you yeah. saying, uh, it's going to be, were you saying, uh, you he was wearing big robes or you're wearing big robes? I'm looking for something big robes. That's okay. like looks like what I would think would be cultist. Oh. Or a fancy religious person in general. Yeah, you know, fine. You things. you you see a young man. Yeah. Um, he is dressed in. What you, uh, what, yeah, what you would probably you recognize as Carnathy noble robes, except they are the entertainer troop version costume of Carnathy robes, not cultist robes, not so. Maze because robes. most of us understand that these are costume pieces, and yeah. we're watching you. Them just you play know out. this guy's an entertainer. You know this guy's an actor. Yes. Okay, so he's playing a show with me, and I don't no, know I'm in the okay. show. No, he's confused. He's this very little, confused. This little he doesn't green, realize that the show This little here. old green Art woman is asking him why he hasn't been to the temple. <clears throat> because he rolled very low on his on his <laughs> discernment check, on his insight check, to see what you were doing. So I get up on the soapbox that's around there, I look him in the eye, and I go, Have you been to the Crones Inn? The Crones Hold? Yes. Yeah, Crone right. told. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Um, when we first came into town four days ago. Oh, that's right. Oh. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> He's so cute when he wants uh, to be creative. You, you, uh. Yeah, as long as he doesn't cause an international incident, we'll be fine. Never do that again. Uh, and he, he, he now thinks he's in part of a production, and as it's you backhand wrong. him, yeah. he mm -hmm. moves with it. <laughs> And falls to the ground, completely unconscious. Yeah. I turn around to our, our group and say, I found them. Yes, you How did. How did we go? This is it. Good job. Good job. Everybody clap. I walk over to him. I pull off the wig and I'm like, I bet you never thought it would be me. <laughs> He's unconscious. <laughs> 
Let's move on to our <laughs> next part of the I, quest. I, I, I put the wig back on and throw it off. I bet you never thought it'd be me. <laughs> no! It's such a oh, no. surprise. Oh, no. Yes. He failed, gasp! He sticks his head up in the air and kind of walks away in the yeah. sunset. Yeah. 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 Uh as you as you make your way uh down the <coughs> road, um you see kind of more of these acts that are setting up, but also as you're getting deeper into town, you see where they've started to set up the pit. Uh, the pit being a large open area. Um normally it would have been used probably for practicing hand-to-hand -hand skills, but it's got a, unlike the firm ground and grass around you, it has sand that has been kind of trucked in so that it's more of a combat arena. You know that most of the actual fights are probably going to take place in the sand. Um, you know that there's a gladiator kind of battle coming up and, and more combat combat coming up in that area. So they're setting up the pit, but not only the pit, there's also vendors that have started to hawk their wares near the pit. Um, a lot of different types of cooks and um, kind of cheap baubles. Uh, you see that somebody has carved little wooden figures of a lot of the actors and fighters and Karnathi soldiers <coughs> that had come to compete. So you can come and get your own little keepsake of the, of the um, person that you want to win. Um, you see that, that somebody has made um, very, very simple and shoddy, like, cloth headdresses that mimic helmets and um, different color flags and that kind of stuff. There's people selling all kinds of stuff. And as you make your way through this, because you kind of have to to get to the temple, um, you hear lo lots of people shouting um, prices and things in a couple of different languages. Um, as, you're, as you're walking by, um, one <coughs> tries to pull you aside, Dari, and says, Two hoppers, two hoppers. Oh, this, this hat for the, for the grand champion. Hey, he's gonna win, I'm telling you. Garmar is gonna win. He's, he's got you this year. He hasn't the past six years. He's got you this year. Um, and you can see that it's a, like, almost like a woven crocheted hat <coughs> that is bright blue and has two flowers Right, two orange flowers right here, and you're not sure who who Gorman is, but you're fairly certain that if that's his hat, he's probably not going to win this year. I, I really actually think that Duke would love to pretend that that was a wig. <sighs> Do you want to? He wants it. Do you want he's super excited mm. for Gorman. I Duke oh, like only do two copper, you say? How I confident are you? <clears throat> How confident am I? How confident are you? Confident that I spent all last month building these. Oh. I'll buy pretty low. five. I know, we're doing pretty good for ourselves. Uh, like, we're uh, okay. Amazing, that's I one silver. I buy that bullshit, but we're okay. I mean, stuff. No. Wait, is it two? I thought it was a hundred. It was two copper, it's, it's ten copper for silver, oh, ten that's silver that's for gold. Okay. That's amazing! You said you should five, right? Yeah. yeah. He's, <laughs> and he, he grabs five and he wraps them up in a, in a burlap like covering and wraps it in twine. Yeah. Yep, I take it. You and can, then, you can tell that he hasn't been very successful yet. Yeah. I keep being told it's a family show. It's a family show. Yeah, I forgot to I mention take, this earlier. It's a family show. I was telling him about um, the I take him out of the sack, put one on, and I forcefully give that to everybody Not else in the party. The He's winner! Done. It'll be the winner! I can know. I can tell. I can feel it in my bones. They're, they're like, they're like sky blue aeronaut, um, aer, uh, aeronautical caps uh, where the goggles are two orange flowers. Oh my gosh, I want those so Gro bad. Groxar, Groxar is, um, you, you can almost feel his frustration and stress like pushing out through the skin. Yeah. Everybody's got one now. I'm worried. Fuck yeah. And, really and it, it would seem that Grafar isn't here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he um, kept walking. <laughs> so, I actually... How is Grafar the grand champion when he hasn't won? No, uh, it's... Groman. 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 Groman's going to be the champion. And you, sir, 
you're gonna you're gonna go you'll be right there with me cheering on cheering him on, right? At, yes! I see that you've got you've got the hat on. Sure. My best customers. My best customers. I put um I have a note that I have a question for. I put 10 silver on Gromon at the okay. betting stand on the way out. Huh? I put 10 silver on Gromon at the betting stand on the way out. Okay. I hate I, I like the hat though. It's a little bit hard to wear with my horns, but I like it. You you stick your horns through the goggles? No, I don't want to do that. And I run and catch up to Arthur. Yeah. Uh, you, the, the area around the temple is a lot quieter. It would almost seem like there are rules that say you can't, that the people hawking their wares can't be within a certain distance from the temple. The doors open? Um, the doors are open. <laughs> and are, are, as we you the, <coughs> are we at the city Where? temple or the abandoned here? temple? No. City, Come city on. temple. Okay. Come on. Uh, I look around to see Come if on, the brother. rest of the group is on the way here or if they're still goofing on. I'm, I'm running away. You can Catching up to you. So I'll be there in like yeah, 30 seconds. <laughs> or uh, five I'll rounds. Combat on the steps before I go in. Combat actions are five seconds. Six. Six. Uh, uh, around. Around the six seconds. Why would we need combat actions at a time? Because Justin's going to start attacking people. Well, I'm trying to think of like... Oh my god, someone grab him. him! No, I mean, everything is fluff right now. Yeah, yeah. You weren't that far behind. I'm just... In, also, in general, just what? Yeah. It's six Fine. seconds. You buy all of the stuff? It's, it's six seconds, which is you about... buy all of the waiters? No, I just bought five hats for us. Gave everybody a hat. And he put a bet on the, the flower guy. I put a, I put a bet on, on, on Grunar. Yeah. Um... For can you do a blessing and a good month for that guy so we can win some money? It's, it's, about, it's about six seconds and about 30 feet when you're walking. If you're running, it's like four times that. So That's really fast. You catch up really fast. It'll be double. I'll wait for everybody before we go in. Yeah. It's not, it's not if you're not in the game. Am I in the games? No, I'm not in the games. It's not against the rules and we all unless it's yeah. someone and I roll my eyes at anybody wearing that. I promise you. Do I have to roll so, deception? So, as you make your way... What? Nothing. Trying to, trying to convince me that... Oh, you guys are having a conversation <clears throat> of something to do later on in the during the pit fights. Yes, okay, we'll do this. As thing. you make your way to the temple, you see that, as mentioned previously, it's an octagonal, build, it's an octagonal building with each side being flat and then more like a dome structure up top. Each of the flat sides has a door and stairs leading down from it. As you approach, you can see up through, and it's a fairly large building, where they have walkways that you can see kind of the other entrances. There are monks uh, and priests all praying in there. There's a couple standing outside doing uh, meditation and what might be certain types of stretches, um, while also Chanting and and anyone doing the right standing around looking approachable or um, waiting to talk to anybody. As you as you kind of make your way in that direction, um, you see that one of the people that's outside standing on one leg with one with one foot kind of bent at a weird angle, um, almost senses your presence or hears you guys battling <coughs> up because most of you are wearing armor at this point. Um, and will they? He opens his eyes. Um, he's a He's a young um, dwarf, youngish dwarf, um, shorter beard, um, but kind of more lithe than you expect from most hardy dwarves. Uh, and he puts both feet down. Um, you can see he's wearing um, uh, subdued orange, like burnt orange um, pants, um, a loose fitting like priest shirt, um, and he looks pretty much at peace as you walk up. Ah, how can I help you? And good morning. Good afternoon, <coughs> good evening, and good night. Good morning, uh... Yo, we're doing well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're searching for some uh, people. Sorry, it's a deep And I uh, want to ask you some questions about the uh, temple that's up in the forest up there. Ah. Uh, <coughs> Yes. We've heard tell of it, but we don't know much about it. There was a town um, up north <coughs> where the forest now is. Um, it was a small temple, or a small town, um, and um, at some point during the war, um, there was a group that came in and destroyed the entire town and des destroyed it with nature magic. 
and that nature magic tore everything asunder except for the temple. For some reason, it couldn't touch the temple. <coughs> uh, and so there is still a temple there. Nobody uses it because something in the in the woods, something in the trees there, protects it. Uh, if you're looking for people, unless they could easily make their way into an area like that, um, I would say they probably wouldn't have, hopefully, especially if you want to find them, they wouldn't have gone there. Yes, it does. So even people of your own faith wouldn't be able to enter the temple? Um, we sent up an acolyte, a couple acolytes, um, last year uh, to see if we could rebuild and, and maybe find a, a nice purpose for the sovereign host there. Um, personally, I've been looking at places to set up a monastery um, because there aren't very many. Um, but um, it was too dangerous. They barely made it out with their lives. The, they, they, they said the trees it was like the trees we came to life but I I wouldn't think that anybody that you want to meet would, would go there well we're looking for people aren't we yeah Great. have you heard of a cult that uh, around here that wears these rope I uh, think red rope right? Red what color robes are the, the people robe? here? Black. No, no, the people here? Yeah. No. Well, like cultists. Like the, 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 the people the of this The blood temple. of bull? Yeah. The blood of bull cultists were like black to dark, 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 dark red. Yeah, but, <coughs> the, 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 but, but the people we're talking to wear what? Most of them are wearing like burnt <laughs> orange and bright, and bright colors. Okay, so not dark colors. No. We're looking for dark Okay, so like, they, have a, they, have they have the red rum, not the red robe. Yeah, they we're looking for like. Did they have a simple loot, didn't they? You guys remember? What was their sim simple? Roman well, intelligence check. Oh no! Everybody? Yeah. Oh, Would it be a history check? Intelligence check. Intelligence check? Okay, not safe. I mean, you so won't have to do it. You already made the smartest or whatever. 16? A 17? A 16? 16? Oh yeah. It's <coughs> not a saving throw, it's a check, right? That's yeah. a 20. Yeah, it's a nat 20. I know. Nat 20. The smart one. 17. So, I'm looking for anybody over 15. I apologize, but you won't need to make this roll. Okay. You aren't here. Is everybody over 15? Oh, yeah, I think so. It had the, the thing that it, it had the... It looked like so this, Duke and then did we'll not. have a picture. Right? That's what you're saying? Duke, uh, it Duke was, is trying to figure out... <coughs> Duke is confused. Like why Google. everybody is doing weird motions in the, in the background. We have pictures, like we literally have a drawing of the symbol. Yeah, we do. And I we did. do have it somewhere. I just don't know where it's at. It's not on my cover sheet. In my sheet. pocket. Yeah, there you go. Is it in some of your notebooks? Because I know we had, we had these. That's the thing is, because I don't, I don't think I drew so it. My note it's says green tennis ball. Right. That's right. I have it's on no the idea what my note means. <laughs> it, it's a strange symbol. Um, it is almost like an upside down red teardrop. Okay. Uh, actually, like a balloon. I apologize. A normal side red teardrop um, with kind oh. of uh, teeth that go like this. It's a bitey teardrop. Right? Yeah. Bitey teardrop. Have you seen anyone with a bitey teardrop? With a blood drop. Oh, uh, like, With yeah. a blood bite. Uh, uh, I'm, bite. I'm sorry, I don't think I recognize. Like a raindrop, but it has teeth. That. And they're super dark, like they like the dark red or the black, like they feel like... They're the evil... You can tell that they're just like sad. Or mad. Or like, yeah, something like or that. Or angry. Oh, they're I apologize. Angry. I apologize. I'm gonna retcon that. Oh no. Uh... Which part? All of it. All of it. Um... Yeah, I, I recognize that. I didn't know... I would be careful throwing around the phrase of cultists. Um, Wait, you speak why? of the blood of bull, yes? Yeah. That's the main religion around these parts. Um, oh. When not the... Uh, when not the s sovereign hosts. So we're looking for the radical Wait. division of the main No, I religion. just have a question. Like, what, sig what 
constitutes a is it just like area that constitutes a cult versus a main faith? I mean, I guess it would be more of a people's perception. Do the masses believe that they're wrong or that they're doing something what we would consider as cultish? Okay, so, so I would say that we believe them as a cult based off of their actions, but it could just be the uh, radical um, thing compared to our specific cool. beliefs. Does the sovereign host have a good relationship with the blood of, blood of the wolf? I mean, we tend to stay in our own streams, as it were. Um, I, I mean, get that, the, but the doctrine, the doctrine really isn't kinda... that different, I mean, in part, but it's very, it's a very Karnasi way of belief. Um, they believe that everyone has a spark of divinity, and it's up to those people to find the power, that power within themselves. And also that death is, um, that death is the end, Dorluth is oblivion, and that the, if the gods exist, they're cruel. So you stand with those you care for, and all we <coughs> have in this life is each other. Okay, so I like get that. That doesn't sound like the people that we met. Maybe which is why, like... which is why I'm saying you should probably watch your volume. Okay, so these blood of wool guys seem kind of cool, but the main group, oh, the people that. that we found, the people that we found, kind of were probably like taking it to another level. Not even <coughs> to another level. Like they took it and they twisted it and making the blood of wool people look bad. Because to me, that's family. You're just wanting to take. The symbol is a dragon skull surrounding a blood red gem. Okay, but are you retconning the teardrop with the teeth? No, that's I was trying to describe it. That's oh. what I'm describing. So, okay. um, a red gem. Where could we, where we find the some of these these guys? That, you know, we kind of want to understand um, how there might be some people that are, are misinterpreting their teaching. Well, we don't have it. They don't have a temple here, but. One of the <coughs> the large houses up the road um, has a fairly I mean the it has a fairly l large grouping of believers of the Blood of Bowl. Really? Yeah. Well, I guess we're going with there. Um, can we make sure that we we are on agreement of no <coughs> bad talking the Blood of Bowl while we're there just because we don't. No, we're not going to accuse them or anything, but we're going to ask, ask them, them about yeah. like you know an extremist. Why were they want to kill yeah, us? Yeah, why are they a cult? Yeah, yeah. why do they want to kill us? But, okay, um, were they trying to kill us because we kind of fucked up their plans? I think they were trying Messed to kill us because we Sorry. had a, the child. Um, I will say, it is early oh. morning and most of them are night people. Oh, we're going to... So have... you probably wouldn't want to wake them. They will be out for tonight's festivities, however. <gasps> That's a good idea. Dude! Yes? We've been getting ready for a big party. The the main the main event of this celebration starts in two days, but there has been there have been plenty of parties leading up to it. I've been covered in your hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all night people. That's weird. I mean, they're not all <coughs> night people, but this this grouping I mean, specifically yeah. tend to come out more at night. That's not huh. suspicious. That sounds a little suspicious. Ouch. It's not suspicious. Well. I mean, and he kind of looks over your group and says, there's a lot of that going around. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, true. And Duke gives well, him, yeah. gives to, him a to be fair, question. Duke, to be fair. Duke, is to be currently, fair. Duke is currently still wearing a mop and bonnet. <laughs> no, Duke threw off the bonnet. Oh, the put mop. on a hat. Huh? I'm wearing a hat. Okay. Yeah. Well, still four of us, maybe four wearing of us, hats. are wearing hats. Are you wearing a helmet? Yeah. Okay. With a hat on top. No. <laughs> yes. I mean, we're harmless. Look around with the people wearing these goofy hats. Probably didn't get stuck on them. I, I cannot be taken off. What? Wearing the hat. Because the group are wearing the hat. Yes. Thank you. I'm wearing the hat. Wow. I can't wear it correctly. Peer pressure. But I'm wearing the hat. I had them stick their horns to the flowers. So what do, guys, what do you guys want to do? Since no, is... I didn't. No. <clears throat> So that sounds pretty dangerous. As you as you kind of are, are standing there and he's I'm bored. he's still stretching, but he's not doing like you know out of strange ones. He's just yeah. he's waiting he's waiting he's still talking to you, but he's he's moving. doing moving flowing motion. And you hear a crash behind you towards where the a lot of the festivities are going, and you see two men, um, one a 
I'd probably six foot kind of beefy dude, <coughs> human, um, and a four foot super beefy dwarf. Long beard um, braided into several long braids with um, silver and gold and platinum beads in them. Uh, you see that he has a tattoo, a dark black tattoo, the, the dwarf crawling up his neck and over the top of his bald head. Um, he's wearing, pa both of them are wearing tan pants that are caked in mud. Their feet are caked in mud. Their arms are, uh, um, they're, they're wrestling and fighting. Yes. Question for this world. Are male and female dwarves able to discern between the two yep. of them? So a male dwarf has a beard, female does not? <clears throat> Sometimes. Okay, so can we cannot discern all the time? Uh, you can discern for other reasons. Um, Upon first glance. This is a male. Okay. Yeah. I want out of character, but I want to like either like win a dragon egg or buy a chicken egg like Hagen. No, we're not giving you dragons. So, <laughs> dragons, I will talk to you offline about that to get no! you caught up on to get you caught up on dragons. Dragons are very rare, very angry, and come from their own island. No one has seen a live dragon on Corvair for a long time because when they come, they come to destroy. Only death follows. Yes. All right, so um, you see this fight, and you see the human. So um, the fight is it in looks like what looks to be a designated fighting area. No, okay. no they're broad. It looks like it started there, and in it's the now, huh? This is no, the it started place. back at the facilities outside the pit, and has knocked over um, like a tent that was on the outskirts of the temple area, um, and they're now fighting. And it looks like the human um, kind of sweeps the arm over one of the dwarf's arms and goes to throw him and the dwarf catches himself and pushes back, knocking into the into the man who lands off of his feet. Are there other people who are watching this? No. Uh, the the monks and priests are starting to... So this was in the pit and nobody followed them fighting outside of the pit? No, because people are still setting things up. But I mean, there's nobody that saw it start and that's looking at this? Not that you see. Yes. Actually, real fighting, or are they just like practicing? Give me a perception check. Wrong. Don't you have a thingy? Do you want to have a thingy? Uh, Roll it. A third, 13 passive. Perception. No. No. Roll <coughs> perception. She's got it right behind her right there. It's a skill. Perception's a skill. 20 side. 20 side. Yeah, you okay. got a 20. You need oh. 20. Roll. Give me 5. Plus, okay, so Five you have perception as your skill. Look in the skills. I think it's three. It doesn't look like a 20 sided though. Is it not a 20 sided dice? It's 20 sided. It? Oh, it is. Yeah. It's a little tiny one. <coughs> okay, look at the skills list. And your I mean, the perception is alphabetical. Ironically, it's, it's, it's a goblin list. It's five. List. I, I can't tell. Okay, uh, it, you can't really tell, but it sure looks like a, a real fight. Well, like, the big fight's not so free on yet. Should we stop them? No way. Uh, you Good see <laughs> the, the human was flipped care. over on the back and does this kind of martial arts move and, and pushes off the ground with his arms and lands back on his feet immediately the bowling the dwarf over and he grabs the dwarf around the throat. Okay, question. Do I have to roll perception <clears throat> to see if either of these fighters have the insignia of the hats we are wearing? How about that? Uh, Neither of them are wearing um, a helmet that looks like that. But I, does it? Do they have some new flowers like flower gums? Give me a perception check. I yell in general. Are one of you? Um, Natural twenty. I like these Gromon. dice. Groman. Or any of you, Groman? Uh, so a nineteen. <laughs> so I have a negative one perception. Um, they seem to into what they're doing, and you see nothing. For, you don't see any oh. flowers. You I really see don't care. The one tattoo uh, that's like up over his shoulder and on the top of his head. Uh, you he see a the dwarf. Huh? Something. What? He just happens to have a it's tattoo. It's like a tribal tattoo up his back and on his head. Uh, the human grabs around the, the dwarf's throat and tightens, and you hear the dwarf say, Release me! And something clicks in your head. That sounds very familiar. Release me. 
None of us were there. That seems familiar. No, to him. To him? Because okay. he woke up. Because I was just in his dream. I thought it was always you. just <laughs> in his dream. I thought we all Unless you were in his dream. <laughs> I assume Somebody that all of us had that dream. He says, release me. And it reminds you that that, must, that was what the voice was saying in the dream uh, that you couldn't remember. I mean, you don't have to act on it, but now you know. Yeah. Does it look like he's get, he's going to release him? Let him go? Uh, yeah, he... So after he says, release me, and taps the ground, mm. the human gets <clears throat> off of him and laughs and says, I told you, I freaking told you, now pay up. And the dwarf fishes in his pockets and produces a coin. A coin about the size of a small apple that has a dragon's face on one side, a dragon's face like this, like getting ready to bite, and on the other side it looks like it has a demon's face, and the demon's face also looks like it's ready to fight. Um, and the, the coin looks to be made of um, like maybe some copper or steel. Um, it doesn't quite shine, it looks kind of rough. Knowledge history if I know what the coin is. Can I roll a history check? Sure. I also might want to change my dice. Because I can't. Well, that's fine. Right, there's plenty of sets. 19. 19. Um, did you roll? Yeah, I only got okay. 11. 11. Oh, wow. Uh, you recognize the coin as um, it, it looks like coins you've heard of from the um, Brotherhood of the Bar. The bar, B A R. The bar, B A R. Um, not drinking bar. It's more like um, like reaching the bar, like a a pinnacle. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's it's a fight club essentially. Offhand, do I know what the um coins meaning is? Is it like a you? It's a currency or is it a challenge coin? It's a challenge coin. Yeah, it's a challenge coin. So it's, it's like a military challenge coin, kind of. Except when you when you challenge somebody, if you get their coin, then you kind of they're not Feel your favor. They're, they're not your correct. servant, but you can essentially get favors for them. John Wick blood coin. Yeah, yeah. Um, nothing super serious, but you can see that the dwarf is not happy to be handing over this coin. Okay. Ah, oh, you got me. But I'll get that back tomorrow. With some of your blood, probably like. And he dusts himself off. And you, as they're standing up and dusting themselves off, they finally look around and see that all of the priests and monks that were standing out here, including <coughs> you guys, are standing and staring at them. And they finally realize where they are and they go, Sorry. Sorry. Um, we'll, we'll have it right over. And they kind of turn around and slowly walk out of the area. That's odd. Hmm. That doesn't happen often, does it? It doesn't. Um, but luckily, they'll they'll probably pay the fee. Um, m most of them do when something like this happens. There's supposed to be a uh, a line. They're not supposed to cross into this holy ground, um, but it happens occasionally get kind of caught up in the fight. You forget where you are. It's hard to... It's easier than you might think to remember where you are. I don't know. Be respectful of the people there. When you're being be swarmed by half you know, be respectful. But, well, was there anything else I could help you with? Do you know from Now that that strange... Oh, no, you're not... A curse curse. Yeah. Are you? And he's still stretching his body into strange shapes. Is he twitches. doing yoga? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I don't know what I'm doing that. Is that oh, I mean, <laughs> it's up to you guys what he knows how to do. Are we going into his So basically, yeah, I guess he just asked you, he was like, do you have any more questions? I said, I don't have anything right now. Maybe if anyone else has anything, but it's not like we don't play with him. We'll go I'm I'm sorry if your paths crossed with some of the more esoteric and possibly old world believers of the blood of old. Oh, um, but I would definitely be careful now in Karnath how you refer to that sometimes ancient religion. 
Is would there somewhere we can go to to learn more about the older teachings? Like a library or... Um, the town, the town has a sage, um, a collector, a lore master, um, but I don't know how easy it's going to be to pry that information from his grasp. I'm just asking for general knowledge, like what you would teach. The general, I mean, is there somewhere where we can learn just a little bit more of this softer side of the blood of gold? Like a library, is that what you're saying? Yeah, a library a or a. There, I know they might not have a temple, but they might have someone who. Uh, you said they have a building kind of or something. Maybe there's somebody there on duty the, or something. We can walk in. I bet about. you they. I mean. I know I have this written down. Probably has home, someone that's willing to. That we were to like talk to you about. Yeah, yeah. It. Like there's so always someone to talk to you about. It. If it was magically sealed. Wait, do you remember where you got it? I'm pretty sure we got it in that time. Uh, before we went into that so temple. there, you yeah, have yeah. a handful of magical scrolls that are mm-hmm. spells. They're chronomancy spells. Yes. Right. Um, I wasn't oh, sure I if I you had those. them or if Tenno had them. I know Tenno had a few of them. I think I have. Okay. One. Um, I can uh, write that up for you. Okay. But yeah, you you guys have a handful of um, scrolls that have. I thought Blanca might have some. I don't know if I was there during that one because right oh. now I'm looking at this and I have some metal tip claws, some pink sa- pinky sapphires. Pinky, uh, pinky nails. Yeah, size sapphire, sapphires, sapphires the size of pinky nails. Yeah, I, I and I, I have. Okay. And again, I hate how I take notes. Green tennis balls. <laughs> I don't know how I or what those are for, but it's there with potions, red ink, and green tennis balls. And this was two years ago, a year and a half ago that we were playing. Oh, I know, like I probably used to play fetch with Duke earlier. Yeah. <laughs> threw, it, threw it in, wherever it comes out, right? Also, there a fancy here. cape and fast, pretty boots. All right. So, um, I, I, the, you, you can see that the only suggestion he would have for something like that type of information is either talking to um, the group that he knows are believers, yeah. or the going sage. and talking oh. to the sage. I think we want to head over there. Do you know which point direction that is? The sage or the So, leaders? yeah, because I'd like to ask about <coughs> Lady Vols, where so we no longer going to the, she's to in the my forest. Notes. I don't think so. At least not yet. Not yet. We might need to take a nap first, because they, like, are night people. He, yes, the sage lives in the white spike. The white spike's right over there. Oh. And he points, and you look back, and you can see that the one of the tallest buildings in town, it is not right here, it's across town, but it's so tall and shaped like a tower that has a point made of white stone. Oh, it's a white spike. Okay, I see what you're talking about. Quite literal. It's the white pokey thingy that I told you about, guys. I guess we can go there and see if somebody's, uh, uh, you know, like a caretaker. We can ask some questions. Oh, I mean, there's only one guy that lives there, and most people don't like being around him, so you'll probably be there. What? The sage. The the, the lore master. He's very different. Is he a morning person? Mm -hmm. I mean... I've only met him twice. I don't think he's a person person. Oh, okay. Cool. That's, that will work great. You want to talk to him? <laughs> Let's go down to him. Okay. Why not? You're the lore person, not me. I'm not a lore person. We're going to, you know, bring people no, no. on. We don't know. His lore is just... <laughs> yeah, I know. But he's like a guard dog or something. I don't know. You don't know what's real lore or the stuff he thinks is in his head. Uh, all right. Schizophrenia um, he lore? says, I wish you luck. In your searches, um, if you involve yourselves in the festivities to come, please be yeah. careful, be safe. Um, sometimes, very rarely, does somebody ha- take away permanent damage, but it does happen sometimes. Um, so, please be wary and be careful. Where do we sign Duke up? Duke says on his way out, says, "I don't need luck. I've got skill." Turns around and immediately slips. 
Yep, you do, buddy. Good job. As 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 Duke turns around, he slips in some of the mud that was kicked up by the fight that had yep. just happened next to you, and he is now laying square on his face, about right in front of you guys. Oh my gosh! I you need to speak hurt. to the manager of this facility. This is dangerous. <laughs> I for look my towards. Friend. I look towards the door and I say, "You have a wonderful time at the festive occasions." You can hear a very muffled. This is irresponsible. You can I hear apologize. a very muffled. Do you know who my heart. I, 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 I just I go let it go. Up. I'm very. I'm is. sorry. <laughs> Duke gets back. Shake him out a little bit. He's yeah. just like trying to like clean up the hat as best as he can. It's caked up. It's very dirty now. Yes, right. I'm turning my character into a Karen. <laughs> wow. So you guys are only going to have four players next week. <laughs> um, all right, so you guys made your way back through um, the, the, really the, the road that leads to the temple, um, which takes you back through and to the pit. You see, can see the two fighters talking to um, a uh, youngish man, but he's wearing a fairly large hat, um, and he has very garish-looking clothes on. You can tell that it's probably part of an um, entertainer persona. Um, but he's handing them a small cloth bag that jingles um, and uh, is pointing back at the temple. Perception, um, based off of knowledge in my profession, knowing roughly, based off the jingling, how many coins or what coins would be in that sack. <laughs> are you, like you are like 50 feet away, but go ahead and roll. With disadvantage. No, they're not paying anything. It's jingle bells. Well, six. Uh, you heard a slight jingling, but it would be almost impossible. You're pretty sure only because of the fabric. It's that fabric. If it yeah. wasn't that fabric, you would have totally known. No, I know, but how much do I know that it is? Uh, you're fairly certain. There's it's, a lot of coins in there. It's 12 coppers, uh -huh. an apple, part of a fish, and maybe like two cookies. Oh my god. If it was gonna be a ham chop, I was gonna be a mutton chop, I was gonna be very perturbed. Thank you for not putting the mutton chop in. Yeah. Uh, and you guys make your way through the the hawkers um, continue to yell out their wares except for the one that you purchased from. Uh, he glad hands you and thanks you again and says, Ah, you're wearing the hats <laughs> and then looks at you with a giant shiny helmet on and goes and gives you kind of a, a, an eye ray, a raised eyebrow, and softly to himself says, I'm sure he's wearing it under the helmet. <laughs> uh, you guys make your way past, um, and you it's kind of like an offshoot, and it's strange because you've been walking around, and, um, oh, one second. Um, Why would they pay him a fish and apples? Why wouldn't you fish pay and fish and apples? Uh, you make your way out and you're, you're through the, this kind of busy town um, and then with a whole bunch of sound and the music and then you turn to the left down kind of a side alley between some of the buildings to head towards the white spike and there's no one. It's very quiet. Um, some of these houses look to be made a little bit better than the houses around them. Um, possibly with multiple layers of in the walls and a little bit better roofs. Um, they also look older than a lot of the newer houses and buildings. Um, and as you make your way back, this happens more and more until you get to a low wall, about three feet tall, of white stones that have been set on each other. Um, a high wall. Uh, for you. Um, it's about a three foot tall wall in a circle around a very tall, probably 70 or 80 feet tall spike that comes to a point. So it's like a cone, a very sharp cone that comes to a point. There's a door on the front and several small openings that might be windows that you see. Um, and then a very large and not well cared for garden that surrounds the spike. <coughs> Yes. As we were walking through the nicer neighborhoods, and my character would probably notice. Not nicer, older. 
Okay, but is it old money looking? Sure, but not very well taken care of. But still old family names. Sure. Still, I would be standing a little taller and brushing off the whatever I got from the fighters and then like brushing their hair and like making sure it's all, like just okay. old money. Because you want to belong, you want to show that you belong here. We're not a bunch of ruffians. When I'm with the ruffians, I'm a ruffian. But oh my gosh, I don't know what to do about that one. <laughs> yeah, that one's probably okay. wears his hat. I'm still probably wearing my hat for him. Uh, but you, it's clean. So that's what you see. There's a large iron gate that it looks to be the only opening in through the fence, the, the low wall. And then there's a door, a large white wooden door, um, on in the face of the spike. Does the gate is the gate opened? It, okay. The gate is not opened. I go to the gate. Do a quick like. Is it locked? And if it's locked, I try to quickly unlock it to make it look natural. How tall is it? Uh, the gate itself is about five feet tall because the wall is only three feet tall and it has stones that come up in like an archway over the iron gate. The iron gate's not locked. It doesn't look often used, but it's not locked. So we can easily step over the wall? It's a three foot wall. I push the gate open. But the gate's unlocked. I step over the wall. The gate opens with a... You know we're here. Our rogue... You see Everybody. that while there is a gate, and while there is hey. about 20 feet between the wall and the spike, oh the garden has overgrown everything. So there is no pathway to the door without walking on and through plants. And we can't recognize these plants? Yeah, look at uh, sure. Plants. Yeah. The fastest way through is straight. And as you, okay, are, wrong with these guys. as you are slowly making your way through the, yeah. the plant life, you look up and you see that Duke has forged a path. Mm. Um, he has stomped on several large peppers and some onions oh, no. um, and torn what looks like bean, uh, bean vines that were going across, has just straight torn them down. Um, but he's at that the door. Food. He's at the door and there's a path. All right. Okay. Um, and knock, knock, knock. There is, heavy, plants, there is a heavy. There is a heavy booming, heavy, heavy booming. Like more that, amplified than like what it should have been. Like more amplified than what it should have been for him knocking on this door, and it seems to echo throughout the spike above you, and yes. No, keep going. And then from behind you, you hear a, ah! and there is a. What can loosely be called old man, it looks like a five foot hunched skeleton with paper pulled tightly over its frame. He wears thick spectacles that are greenish blue in color, but about two inches, and so they make his small, tiny, beady eyes very magnified. He has no hair on the bond, his body that you see. And there is a, a musty, but um, uh, grown. I'm trying to think. The, the smell you get from warm, well-tilled earth. That like dirt? mixed with let me finish. That finish that mixed with like the dust you get from old books, wafts off of him as he kind of pushes himself up from the garden that he was working in. You see that he's wearing very large robes, robes that are way too large for a man of his size, and they have heavy stains from the greenery and the, and the dirt all over his, the knee sections, the arms, pockets are filled with different plants and vegetables, um, and he has a pair of shears in his hand that he's holding up in front of him. So uh, and that's where we're going to take a break. So, um... Uh, hold on with us, and we will be back in about 20 minutes.
Did you know that you can subscribe to the channel for free if you have Amazon Prime? It's true. All you have to do is sign into your Amazon account, and then go to gaming.amazon.com. On the left side of the screen, under your name, it will ask you to link your Twitch account. Once that's done, just head over to our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash gamersledge. You'll have an option to subscribe using your Twitch Prime. It costs you nothing but helps support the channel. There is one catch, it runs out in 30 days, so make sure you come back and click the subscribe button again next month if you want to continue supporting great shows like this one. Thanks for helping. Be excellent to each other. And game on. There's new items in the merch store. Head to bit.ly slash gamersledge merch. That's all one word, gamers, ledge merch to check out the newest latest and greatest gifts like mugs t-shirts mouse pads stickers and more show some love for the show creators they get a cut from each item sold whether it is a notice me senpai dm t-shirt or a mug that helps you clarify when a point needs to be made in conversation there's still a few minutes left in the break you've got time we will be here when you get back visit bit.ly slash gamer sledge merch be excellent to each other in merch. I mean, game. On.
and welcome back. Um, nice break. Uh, so as we broke, uh, the there was an old man, possibly the sage, getting up from some gardening, looking out with a shocked expression over all of the food that had just been stomped over by the um, goblin in a bl bright blue hat. Um, he is holding shears out in front of him, but it does not look like he is holding them defensively. Um, he seems to just kind of be surprised that anyone would come calling since um, it seems like he hadn't seen people in a while. Um, and Duke turned around, Groxar, those were his precious vegetables! Pay for it, you little one. Oh, no, um, it's okay. I, I make more than I can eat anyway, and for some reason the people of the town, they don't trust my food. Ah, a man after my own heart. <laughs> uh, I, I can say the last time I spoke to a goblin here, it was many, many years ago. I'm, I'm surprised that any had come. Well, it was, it was about, like, it's ten seconds ago. No. No, I'm, I'm pretty <coughs> sure. It was me. <coughs> you and I. We just had the, with the vegetables. Before that. Well, anyway, um. Excuse him. Can I, can I help you with something? Are you lost? We have questions from us for a sage. Are you a sage? You have questions, and someone pointed you here, and you came here. That's. They said you were a sage. That's odd in itself. Why? Um, please, please wait, come wait. in. Come in. Why? <laughs> and he, he moves past you, carefully moving himself around the vegetables. Hey, um, and you hear... I like him. Yeah. He runs... He, like. he takes a long-fingered hand again. No, you don't he's almost suits. He's almost skeletal. He runs so one shiny. long finger down the center of the door. And the door, which looked like it would open like a normal door, yeah. parts in the center and opens... With two half doors. Does it look like it's magic or just a trick? It's just a tr it's just how it's designed. Aww. And at, but as you walk, as you move to walk in, several smells hit your uh, hit your face, and they're all old person smells and antique smells. And as you move like into grandma. this area of the white grandma. spike, you see why. Um, it is very much a hoarder home. Aww. If the hoarder collected and canned vegetables and books and antiques. So much good stuff! Um, most of them are books and many of the books look, while they look fairly well taken care of now, it looks like they were in all states of disrepair when he received them. Uh, and he kind of moves in and sets the shears down on a tall pile of what really looks like scroll to empty scroll cases. Um, and he uh, starts to disrobe, and as he disrobes, you can see that under the gigantic robes he was oh wearing, God. he's wearing um, a very form-fitting set of pajamas, or like long johns? soft, soft long johns. Yeah. How, come, he's like come in, in, but scrawny. Come in, come in. Dude. He's he's past scrawny. He looks like a skeleton. With paper skin that was pulled tight yeah, over Yeah, but its like he started as human skeleton size, not like smaller. He is about five and a half feet if he stood up straight, but he's not standing up straight. So Duke goes back to what he believes okay. was probably the greatest achievement in his life to see. Pulls out a jar, turns to the Professor Sage. Is this a five year old Rutabaga? <laughs> <laughs> I start laughing again. <laughs> Do you think if he leaves you here, he'll it's even notice? Twelve. Probably not. <laughs> Twelve-year-old Rita Baker. That's it. Two silver. Two silver. This is like the best babysitter we've ever had. This is like the Duke sitter. <laughs> you really like, Yeah, I'm like I don't think he knows. You don't understand. I you don't understand. No, the, we do not understand. More. The Parliament Pie will be taken to a whole another level. Oh. Wait, by putting that in it? Oh my Parliament god, Parliament pie. I haven't had some of that in god, I can't. years. I um, my name is Misanthropin. Misanthropin. Mm. <laughs> okay. 
gonna be glad that I don't and know. No, Can we call you feel free. Take it. I have three. Here, and he hands you another one. <gasps> no, no. Yes. It's a, it is a, a clay jug, essentially, with a stopper in it, but on the outside it's labeled with the year and the, what it is. How many years? That, both. Oh. One was 12 and one was eight. Mm. Huh. Which is a long time for something to be yes, put in a clay pot. A, it's like, been pickled. It's been soaked. It's been it fermented. Marinated. Fer- we're fermenting um, garlic. But you see, flavor. you see probably hundreds of these bottles of these clay pots. Some of them cracked, but not as much as him. Um, so don't, don't expect Duke to be a lot of help. He's just admiring everything You had, here. You no, had he's questions. Like candy About a... Um, a faith that's local that's been around for a long time called the Blood of Vol. Ah, yes. I do have, like, and a Lady Vol. I, I don't speak of her. Okay, but let's talk about the Blood. Uh, the Blood of Vol is actually very fascinating. I have a book around here somewhere, and he starts <coughs> moving around, and then he seems to realize he's wearing underwear and moves quickly over to a small armoire opens it and puts on a nearly identical robe to the last robe he took off with stains in the same space. There's muddy and grass stains on the knees and on the elbows and around the hands. Um, Um, Duke throws him a book that's probably what he needs while he's still just looking for stuff. Roll me a d20 plus dex. He's gonna break the book in jars. Uh, Plus the dex modifier? Yep, dex dex modifier. Uh, 19. Uh, the book smacks into the old man and knocks him into a pile of what you assume are clay pots, which all clutter the floor with a <laughs> And he's now no. laying on the floor surrounded by broken pots and vegetables. Hey, Duke. No. I go over to help. Duke still doesn't see it. Up. He's just like the book you're looking for just there, he's just like admiring everything else. Duke! No. I, I huh? go over to help the old man yes. As you as you help the old man up, she seems very confused. Don't Bo- hit old books, man with books. Books fly, but not like that. They haven't attacked me in ages. <laughs> Poor Wait, thing. And he picks happy? up the book, which you now see has books? pickling juices all over it. And it's labeled um, Religion in the State of Our Times by M.C. Monahan. Wait, is that the book we needed? It's a book. He's still looking at jars. Don't look at him. And... As you help him up, he says, Ah, thank you. Oh, oh, may I? And he points to your horns. Oh, yes, you may. He takes you know, a couple fingers. Horns. He takes a couple fingers and touches the very, very tips of your horns and says, Ooh, I have, I have to say, I have, I have only met one other chiefling in the entire long age of my life. He was evil and tried to kill me. <laughs> You are much nicer. So far. Unless you plan right on killing me. No, I... Oh, gods! Are you here to kill me? <laughs> no, I'm not here to kill you. Do not worry. Is this a normal one? I'm nice. A normal one? Yeah, that's not the normal one. There's normal ones? I'm nice. Okay, uh, as you... Uh, he, he picks up the book and hands it off to you because you're the closest person and then continues to look through um, other stacks of books. As you are flipping through pages, you can see that it does have a little bit of information on the Blood of Bull. Also the Silver Flame, the Sovereign Host, and a couple other um, religions from the area, including a small passage on um, the Birthing of the Blades, which is a Warforged religion that's been around for about 50 years. I just seem to have uh, was there any other questions as he's m- maneuvering around the full room? Is there a reason we don't talk about the lady? Uh, yes. Um, speaking, speaking about... Um, oh, she's a lady. Kind of came about the same age. You know yeah. She, <coughs> she will not be named. Wait, if we say her name like three times, is she going to come here? Maybe. Please do not. I thought that was Batman. I don't know. We get things over with. <laughs> I thought your shirt was. Speaking, speaking about Arandis Bull. Um, t- 
tends to disappear, people. And then he realizes what he says and goes, I shouldn't have Wait, said that. I, I shouldn't have said that. And moves back into what he's doing. Can I do a perception just to hear that? Roll perception to see if you heard it well enough to remember. What? Um, and anyone I, else roll perception around me because I do. No, that's cheating. I got a four. What'd you get? I got a one. A one. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I heard he spoke, Amanda. He spoke way too quickly for you to be able to say that. Amanda. Okay. Am I speaking loud enough for everybody to hear? Mm -hmm. Amanda. Okay. Yeah. And if I, because it also gets late while we're running, if you have a problem with me pronouncing something, make sure to tell me. Um, okay. Um, but that, on the other hand, I'm not going to repeat because it's a word you shouldn't have said. Um, he yeah. says... Uh, the, the blood of old itself, um, it came into being, I mean, it started very small, but an, in the last war, um, it grew, uh, <coughs> early in the last war. Um, Karnath's overwhelming military might was held back, held back by famines and plagues at home, um, but the Seekers, uh, point out that some of the warlords turned temples and towns devoted to the Blood of Vol into military garrisons. Um, the Blood of Vol is all about their rites and rituals. Um, it's, um, it, it does not surprise me that as the Blood of Vol focuses on undeath, that it would find a foothold here in Karnath. Why is that? Well, the, the Blood of Vol not necessarily worships, as he's looking through books and tossing books and stuff. Not necessarily worships undeath, but a, a large portion of their higher leaders tend to follow undeath. Um, and believe that um, being intelligent, sentient, past death is a form of... What's the word? And he's snapping his bone-like fingers together. Uh, they sound like popcorn left too long in a tub. Um, and she says, Ascension. Yes. Ascension! He believes that... Where is that this place that does that? Karnath. No. It's up there? We're here. Yeah, I know, but I didn't know that they were the ones that had the armies. Yep. Oh, I thought they had a bigger mountain range no. for some reason. The Moor Holds are where most of the Dwarven clans are from, but Karnath, yeah. Karnath is the country that has a lot of the undead yeah, servants and parts of their military forces. They have Fort Bones and Fort Zombie. Yeah, Fort Bones is where I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. Do you see it? No, I see Fort Deep Dark. Because I'm looking right around here, and I see... Fort Deep Dark, but no. Fort Bones is all the way down in here. Okay, cool. You guys are here. Fort, okay. Fort Zombie. If you went north, you'd hit Fort Zombie. Okay, so this makes a lot more sense. So um, we are looking for zombie lovers. Um, not necessarily zombie lovers, but like I said, um, sentient, sentient undead seem to be the pinnacle of what they are trying to achieve for themselves. They do believe in powering oneself through rite and ritual. The, the purpose of the self, to build on your own divine nature. Like a lich? Perhaps. Yeah. Um, this, is not, this is not easy knowledge to have, but I have to say it's been a long time since I had so many guests. <coughs> It reminds me we were headed to Gavis Hold, remember that? that was, mm. Both of your times, same time. Oh, sorry. So, go ahead and roll. Um, it would be a perception check. Uh, a history. A perception check. And you were saying? I was saying it reminds us, reminds me when we were headed to Gavis Hold, like, the beginning. Remember that? We fought those cultists? Mm. I, I do have a question. History, yeah. right? No, history. perception. Not perception. Um... Was there ever a history um, with the Blood of Vol believers and um, dragons? The Blood of Vol doesn't really go back that far. Um, 
that's that it. So here, and he hands you like three books stacked on top of each other that talk about the Dragon Wars and what people think the Dragon Wars really are. Yes. Do we know what the Vol and Blood of Vol is? We have so many questions. Um, you're gonna never. Gonna but I feel like that's a general time. like I would have known, but I just I, I don't know what the the Vol verbiage of uh, the Vol Blood of Vol is. Um, Vol uh, goes all the way back to um, Arenal. Um, which is the island, is the continent of elves, where they worship the Undying Court, the, like I was telling you before, the Undying Court being the ancestors that are good liches. Are you a good lich or a bad lich? And um, the line of Vol arose a while ago, um, and uh, it was essentially um, people that were a family line that was focused on undeath. So the Vol is a group of it's, people. It's reaching the back there. There aren't really anyone from that family anymore. Okay, but it was the last name of family. It yeah. on Lake Sigurd. Yes. I rolled 18 on to see how old this book is. Uh, this book is about 90 years old. But it looks like it's been... It started about 90 years ago, and the, on the front, the first date is 90 years ago, but it was added to over the war, which is why you have a Warforge, uh, it talking about a Warforge religion, and Warforges haven't been around for 100 years. They've only been around for 60-ish? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn to the one about, I, I almost get distracted by, Dari almost gets distracted by the one about the Silver Flake, of course. Yep. But she shakes off it. She shakes it off and then continues to the page about the blood of Vol. The the biggest thing to understand about the blood of Vol, I believe, although I'm now I'm starting to wonder why it is you came searching for that question, is how uh, different belief structures have popped up, different cells. Um, I'm trying to think of Sex. the best way to put that. Sex. False. Um, well, I would be careful calling it that. Um, but different sects or denominations of the Blood of Vol um, find that they have their own way of doing things. That would be the best way for me to put that. Um, or interpretations of the uh, scripture. What about the symbol? Anybody? Mm. It was yeah, why is the symbol the based symbol? off of the, of the blood. She has it. You have a symbol? Yeah. We found a new signature on several of The their... symbol looks like, um, okay, I still see it as a teardrop with teeth, but you said it was a dragon face? Yep. A dragon skull. It's a dragon, dragon skull. skull holding a dragon. Ah, uh, yes. Um, different, uh, denomination sets of the of the cult of Blood of Vol have different um, symbols, but many of them go back to that blood red gem with some form of teeth or a skull bone protuberance. Do you know which, what this specific symbol belongs to? What, what, what symbol? The Blood of Vol symbol? The symbol you just described? That was the drag. I yeah. apologize, I misunderstood. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm wondering what you mean, but yes, that symbol, most of them share a common set of, um, what they do. But the one that looks like a dragon skull is particularly, is that a specific sect? Uh, I'm not sure. I've been out of the common world for a while. Producing all these miracles. <clears throat> Some, yes, but sadly, uh, I'm allergic. So I make miracles? them, and nobody takes them, and so I just make them. Wait, you make miracles? Have you not seen the wonders? Oh wait, are you talking about canned goods? Because that's not miracles. You're have talking you, about. Have you tried about. selling your goods at the? No one wants to buy them. Everybody <laughs> should buy them. Somebody might buy them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Somebody that would yes. buy a, a hat with flowers on it probably would. Probably. Oh yes. Oh, he's a good salesman too. <laughs> we should partner through him. <laughs> There's this guy, Dibbler. Sorry. Different 
Mmm. Might be able to share, sell some of your candy. Maybe, maybe I'll have to make my way out there. That's a dangerous world for a man as old as me, but perhaps I'll, I'll make you that should get We can put the vegetables on hey, a stick. Hey! Have you ever thought of being an intern? Hmm? I don't know. I think you know. No. Volunteers. <laughs> we'll go find some, like. Did you have any other questions besides that of this religion? Can, um. What's the Oh, hit? I have a the question about that temple in the woods. Temple in the woods. I'm afraid I'm not sure what that is. Oh. Is there? There's a temple that you that's out in the middle of nowhere that like magic turned woods happening over there, and now there's just a temple. There might be. Yeah, how long have you been here? You should know about a temple in the woods if you've been here. Do you so there know was a temple. There's two temples. The one just outside of town, and then there's the one that is now the temple formerly known as the Temple in the Woods. It is now covered by woods. What was that second temple for? Is there, uh, oh, what do you know about all the temples that were built here when you were a youngin? <laughs> well, uh, I have a, I have a throw for that too. And he scratches his nose and thinks about it and says, one second. And he reaches a long finger, long hand up and pulls down a ladder. And then you hear the creak of his bones as he crawls up this ladder, almost insect-like. Um, his legs moving at rear angles, um, and into oh, the good. second floor. How old are you? The second floor. He's moving a lot differently than he should for his age. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, like, I don't know what your age is. Can you, you tell us so we can know when to celebrate your birthday and we get the right The year? hatch that he just went up through? It's kind of dark up there, and as you, you see his head kind of peek back down, and as he blinks, you see th four sets of eyes blink, and he says, Oh, I'm older than you could possibly know, and his head kind of turns all the way around, <laughs> and then he jumps at you, and no, no. that's where we're going to end for tonight. Oh, I hate you so <laughs> much. I was just being careful. We were being so thank you guys for joining us on this episode of Everon Borrowed Time. Um, we will be back again next week. Uh, remember, you can get Gamers Ledge merch at bit.ly forward slash Gamers Ledge merch, all one word. Um, and make sure you hit us up on all of the various social media. Let us know what you think. Um, thank you very much. And um, from all of the players I have here, from myself and all of the people back to Gamers Ledge, game on. And candy yeah. vegetables. No, this is why I don't trust, trust it. Him. Because if you're preserving the vegetables, it's
watching HMN.